Hey, hello everybody and welcome to another episode of the Disgusting Resilient podcast, another episode of our series Infection Critical, where we look at the best death guard lists that have been performing in the past week or so. Um, so, before we get started, if you do enjoy the content, please feel free to leave a like and a subscribe. And if you really, really like it, consider becoming a Plague Marine, get access to our Discord, become a member. Uh, we get to Plague Surgery streams, you get to have us review your lists, you get to join in giveaways, all sorts of good stuff. But if you don't fancy that, at least just leaving a little like can really help us with the YouTube algorithm monster. So, <laughs> let's get into it. So, series goals for Infection Critical. It's a weekly video, it's more bi-weekly now, just due to time constraints. Uh, where we basically look at the best Death Guard performing list of the week now. Interestingly, this week it is the first proper week of the new October MFM manual kicking in. Uh, so the Munitorum Muni 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 Field Manual, can never say it. Um, so we've got some new points, Death Shard have dropped, Mortarians dropped, Biology Pooch Fires dropped, and Infected Objectives are now permanent, which is really, really cool. Um, so this is going to be quite an interesting week to see. Uh, we're going to look at the kind of lists and units that people have done well with, maybe have a quick look at the matchups and yeah hopefully the idea is that you guys watching this can have an idea of what's working out there what's performing well and maybe it'll help inform you either purchases or list construction so first up this week we've got brandon st pierre at the kippers melee who finished fifth out of 84 players with a four wins and one loss record so Kipper, uh, Kipper, he's Brandon, Kipper is the event name, <laughs> Brandon rocking and actually quite an interesting list here, so he's got double Foul Blight spawn, double Biology Pooch Fire and Typhus, rocking two large bricks of Plague Marines, rocking heavy play weapons, Melter Guns and Spewers, uh, obviously got a Plasma on the Sergeant as well, um, obviously they're going to be joined by the Foul Blight spawn and the Biology Pooch Fire, giving the squad to fight first, and crits on fires and lethal hits on all weapons. It's kind of the standard 10 man squad that you're gonna see each has a rhino. So we've got two big bricks of fight first, lethal, well, critting fires, plague marines. Really nice solid unit. Can be a bit tricky to get value out of because of how expensive the unit is in terms of trading. Um, but it is a powerful unit nonetheless that can hit way above its, um, way above what people would expect. We've got a single unit of Death Guard Cultists and two units of Chaos Spawn, which is actually quite interesting. Death Guard cultists are a very staple in Death Guard lists. Again, it's great. You get scout moves, they're fast. They go out, they do actions, they can screen, they can get early sticks on objectives, things like that. And if they die, who cares? It's cultists. Well, the two units of Chaos Spawn are quite interesting. A bit more expensive than cultists, more durable for sure, uh, with the four up save followed by a five up feel no pain, and they heal, which is quite nice. Um, they're also movement seven or eight, I think it's seven. Um, but that extra movement, I know it might actually be eight. But the movement on them is actually quite nice because they are beasts. That means they can go through walls, which is really nice. So having something that moves a little faster than regular means you can get infected objectives or infection spreads or contagion out on this important target. So you can get minus one save or weapon skill, etc. where well, you need it. And at the same time, they're a bit more durable. So as you put out 10 cultists, anything sneezes on them, they kind of die. Chaos Bomb require a little bit more... A little bit more punch to take out so they can be great left on home objective but they're also good enough to be able to you know put out and just go and like i said spread some contagion or go do an action maybe just put for area denial but interestingly they actually can because of the stats they're a bit weird they're a bit swingy but they can beat up other skirmishing units like scouts anything like eldar rangers if you manage to get a charge into it they actually can be quite punchy you can even have them kill things like i've had them kill assault in, assault intercessors jump assault intercessors all those kind of things so um, they're not bad, they're, I wish they were a little cheaper, but two units of them, again, it's only 140 points that, for 70 points each. So it's not the worst thing in the world you can put on your list, and it clearly paid off here, and again, at the end of the day, it's two cheapish, fast, faster moving units than normal, that don't have the problems of bloke drones where they've got to go around buildings, you can go straight through, they spread contagion, do actions, so overall, good inclusion, because with the cult list, you've got three units there that are more than happy to just go around and score things for you. Then we've got one unit of three Death Shroud Terminators, who could, be, I'm going to assume, be joined by Typhus to get the minus one to wound. Death Shroud are really good. The extra points drops really help them. This guy, uh, Brandon, is obviously not committing to going crazy with them, but still want to use one unit of three, because it's just a good delivery system for some nice, hard-hitting melee. That's a bit more durable than Plague Marines, and a good attachment for Typhus, who's a bit of a no-brainer in every list still. Backing this up, we've got two Rhinos. Again, walking Plague Marines, dead Plague Marines. So every Plague Marine squad needs a Rhino. So we have two for the two big squads. Two Predator Destructors. Again, just a really cheap but good value fire platform that's going to like hold down those long ranges, which is really nice. Uh, these guys had uh, last cannons on them. Sorry, I forgot to put on the list there. Uh, then we have a Fetid Bloat Drone with Spitters. 
again it's 90 points it's cheap it's fast it flies it's got some nice overwatch it can it can go out force trade start the engagements off and if you lose it it's only 90 points but it's tough for its points toughness 9 10 wounds three up save five up invulnerable can be quite annoying to shift especially if you get lucky on those invulnerable rolls so a really nice unit to have and then three plague burst crawls which are actually my like favorite unit in the army i'm not really taking them right now because i still think they're very expensive but brandon here making it work <laughs> so i'm actually really happy to see this um again four and one so maybe the plague burst crawls are what caused the loss i doubt it um but the plague burst crawls again a lot of people have took out lists saying they're too expensive and i kind of agree but they are still a really durable tank. Two up save, in cover, so you basically have a one up save. You still have an invulnerable if you get shot by anything with a ludicrous AP. Entry cans can be a bit whiffy, but they're not the worst. And the indirect is obviously a nice tool to have, especially if you can get something like Chaos Spawn Outlet to boil Blight targets and remove cover and give minus one save contagion. It can make them a little bit more reliable than normal, although hitting on fours is still a bit of a crime. Uh, and unfortunately, they are paying the indirect tax from other armies, really. But again, three semi-durable tanks, bringing some decent little anti-tank-ish weapons on them. Um, and again, it kind of puts them in a position where if you expose these, the Predators can hold the longer line of sights. The play bus calls then able to be a bit more aggressive with how they play. Uh, use that tough body, throw it round. If someone charges a, a Plague bus crawler to kill it in melee, follow it up with some Plague Marines, maybe set up a heroic intervention, all these kind of things. So win path for Brandon, he had to take out first a fellow Death Guard player. So that guy unfortunately got taken out in the mirror match. Then he had World Eaters, which is... Traditionally quite a nice match, especially here we have two fight first bricks of plague greens. That's going to be really, really helpful for dealing with that. So nice match up there. Eldari. Um, Eldari can be tough. The indirect actually is one of the matchups where you do want the indirect because Eldari dies even with hitting on fours. They're very elite, very expensive. So being able to kill little units of five scoring things here or there can really, really hinder the Eldar. Uh, then we had Death Guard again. So another mirror match. So again, it's down to player skill at that point. You know, better Death Guard player will win. And his loss was right at the very end. And it was a one point loss, I believe, if I remember looking correctly, to Imperial Knights, unfortunately. So again, that mass skew of, you know, high toughness bodies, unfortunately got the better of Brandon, but only by a single point. So it shows that maybe one, that could, that's the difference between one secondary draw, you know? Or maybe Brandon didn't go second. And if again, second can be quite important for scoring a lot of points. So still a really, really good run. And to see four wins and one loss and finishing fifth overall, with this list, which is pure Death Guard again, bear that in mind, we've talked about a stream, uh, again, if you want to go check the stream, check the lives, um, about is pure Death Guard back, and this is another pointer to make me look like, yeah, Death Guard a pure could be really still packing a punch these days, so, uh, really cool list, super happy to see, and well done to Brandon there, and if you enjoy your Plague Burst Crawlers, well, someone's made it work, so get out there and try it yourself. <laughs> so... Next up, we've got Garrett Stacey bringing in a five wins and zero loss, so undefeated. Rumble on the Rivers, second place out of 83, unfortunately losing out on first place due to battle points, I believe it was. But it is the 18 Death Shroud Dream, the Spam King himself. <laughs> we are rocking with a Death Guard Icon Bearer, interesting tech piece. Now, we have talked about this a lot on the latest live we did, um, the Death Guard Bible, so I won't go too into detail here. If you want more detail, check out that, and Garrett's going to come on soon and talk about this list. But uh, for now, just quickly go over it. The Icon Bear is obviously good, because you can, if you want, make one of the Plague Marine Squads OC3, if you feel like you really need it. Failing that, you can keep him solo, he can, you can just fly him out, he can do an action, plant his little banner, spread that contagion, which is also really nice. Um, so he's a bit, bit, of a, bit of a utility pick, very niche, not commonly used, but it's nice to see him getting some use here. Three Death Guard, Death Guard Terminator Sorcerers, so... Each one of those Death Shroud Terminator bricks is going to be minus one damage in close combat, which is really, really nice. Plus, you can stack it with Disgusting Resilient if you come across damage free melee, so there'll be damage minus two, uh, which is kind of silly. <laughs> but you can do that, you can do that. Uh, and they obviously bring their nice little casino gun attack, so you have a flat three damage shooting attack once per game with 2d6 shots. Sometimes it whiffs and does nothing, sometimes it absolutely obliterates like an enemy elite unit, so... That's not the main reason you're bringing them. That's like the cherry on the cake. The minus one damage is the real deal. Um, and having that go off on a two up rather than spend two command points is quite nice. But the good thing is if you roll the two up and you fail it, you can always default back to the stratagem if you really, really need it. 
We're also rocking Typhus. Uh, Typhus in this one actually has a unit of Poxwalkers that he can potentially join. Uh, Poxwalkers actually seem to be coming a bit back. I've been speaking to other people and a unit 20 Poxwalkers is actually quite annoying to remove. Not hard to kill, but a lot of people aren't preparing for a unit like that. So it can take multiple activations of shooting to delete that unit. And yeah, it'll die. But if it eats enough firepower, it's done its job. Typhus can either join with the Poxwalkers if you feel like you're going to get some use out of the regeneration and the stuff like that. Or feel free to still detach him and just use him as a free, you know, deep strike somewhere, do an action, do some mortal wounds kind of deal. Which we've all been doing for ages, so that's also cool. Interesting thing, Poxwalkers as well. They stop your opponent redrawing Call the Horde because you do have a viable target for it. So if they, you know, if you have Call the Horde in your list, they draw the card. Normally, they just redraw it. Now they have to either pay a command point to redraw it or they're stuck with it. And trying to kill 20 Poxwalkers, especially if you're hiding them, can either make people just lose the secondary points or they can overextend stupid amounts of firepower to get the points and then cool if you killed 100 points of your models and exposed 500 which you can then pick up in return so real nice little inclusion there with the pox walkers uh, with typhus we've got more tiring as well again coming down in points he's just big he's tough he's chunky he absorbs firepower gives out a nice aura of ignore all modifiers he just kind of can sit around the death shroud give them support he's also great for stuff like terraform He's tough, he's tough to kill, and for 300 points, even if he does die, it's not the biggest loss in the world, it's not like losing Magnus or something like that, so Marty coming down to 300 points, you're going to see him a lot more, I think. Four squads of five Plague Marines with no character support and a lot of shooting firepower in these, still rocking the heavy Plague Weapons, so three heavy Plague Weapons in each unit, but we've got dual Plasma and Blight Launch, so lots of two damage shooting, these are great, just little MSU units, you don't need character support for MSU, but it reminds us that Plague Marines are actually kind of crazy. If you look at other battle line units of the same points cost, Plague Marines beat them every day. Like, Assault and are like 80 points, but they just have Chain Swords and one Power Fist. We get two Plasma Guns, a Blight Launcher, and three equivalent Power Fists. You know, five man. It's bonkers, plus being T5. Yeah, we lose one movement, but it is what it is. Now, he still has the Rhinos, because again, you know, walking Marine, dead Marine. So these are great, you can fire them out five at a time to flip an objective with their OC-10 if you've got the Icon Bearer attached, OC-15 technically. Um, or you can just shoot them out do an action or they're really good for just fighting and potentially punching up to little units, you know. Someone has five Legionnaires, five Rubrics, these guys can quite reliably go and, you know, fight that fairly comfortably. So it's a really nice include and it just does remind us that there are more ways to play Plague Marines than just shoving all the characters on them in big 10-man bricks and using them that way there is that you can still use them as just five man msu trade scoring pieces which is really nice still rocking a 10 death guard cultists we talked about this before no surprise there um, so don't need to really go into that why they're so good and then obviously the three big bricks of death shroud terminators um there's not much to say, it's three, it's 18 Death Shroud Terminators, you, if your opponent can't deal with it, it's going to run over them pretty nastily, and again, Garrett's going to come on and talk more about this list um, in a video, probably when I can catch him to record, he's at an event this weekend, so probably be sometime in the week. Uh, so I'll let him explain how he plays it all, but I'm pretty sure only one of these units starts in Deep Strike, the rest are all on the board, because you can't have it too much off in Deep Strike, because someone will just pressure you and zone you out of the entire board, but again, we'll leave it to him. And he has brought one unit of three Nurglings, um, at the end there so it's technically not pure death guard but i count it as pure death guard because nerglings to me are on every death guard model therefore i'm sorry nerglings don't really break pure death guard for me personally i, I think that's more than fine so five wins zero loss with what i would consider pure death guard plus it's just nerglings it's 40 points at the end of the day and um, now his path to win was votan world eaters Grey Knights, which can be tricky. So the first two, so-so. Votan can be a bit mm, hit and miss. World Eaters is fairly favoured in his sense here. He's got 18 Death Shroud, all with Overwatch, all with minus one damage. Like, what what can they do? <laughs> you got Grey Knights. That can be tricky. Trying to catch them everywhere. So well done on that one. Imperial Knights, again, can be a tricky one. The big toughness skew there. But it seems like the Death Shroud saved the day. Especially when you look at this list and you realise there's no real dedicated any tank. But he made it work. And Black Templars have a variety of builds. But if it was like Templar Crusader spam, which has you know, been nerfed a lot. Or if it was just generic marine stuff, then God help. Because these Terminators are here and ready to wreck your day. <laughs> but well done, Garrett, on the fire. And oh, Rumble on the Rivers. Second place of 83 players. Congratulations, mate. Massive, massive good work. And last but not least today, Don Hooson with a four wins and one loss at the battle against Breast Cancer AZ. Fourth place out of 28th. And of course, it's a very Don Hooson list. So we're rocking a lot of villains with Deadly Pathogen, spare points. We're rocking Typhus, 
Toon is a Chaos Spawn again. So just like the first list we looked at, Chaos Spawn doing quite well. So maybe we should look at them again. One big unit of six Death Shroud Terminators. I'm going to be, guess, normally accompanied by Lord of Villains. But again, can swap depending on matchup. Maybe if you're against a melee heavy matchup, you put Typhus in there for the minus one to hit. And then two times three Death Shroud Terminators. So one of these is running without a character. And I think Don said he dropped one of these because, again, without the character, you can lose the rule. Um... But, you know, still works this time, so maybe you don't always need a character. I'd still probably recommend it, but if you're really strapped for points, you're more than welcome. Then the meat and potatoes, the three Death Guard Defilers. Crabs! Crabs everywhere! <laughs> so, three Death Guard Defilers, a unit people would consider jokes. It turns out, not so funny when it's blasting you with a lot of virulence. If it can see you, they're going to be hitting you on twos and ignoring your cover. Strength 10, AP 1, flat 3 damage. D6 plus 3 shots each with blast. And if you get Contagion in range for minus one save, they're now AP2, and for a command point, you can go up to AP3. So these things can actually really, really hurt. And an interesting thing Don said is he uses them like firing platforms. He doesn't look to use the claws. The, the, claw, the claws. Um, the claws are there in case someone wants to come and punch you, because normally you have like a predator disruptor. Someone wants to come and melee it and kill it, and the poor predators, you know, all there going, help me, I need help. The defiler, however, goes... Oh, you're going to come at me? Okay, I'll just walk a bit towards you and pick you up my claws and kill you. <laughs> but really, he's using them as firing platforms that can defend themselves, which is really cool to see. We're also backing this up with two Chaos Predator Disruptors. Rocking Heavy Bolters this time. I don't think he needs the last cannons, given that he has crabs everywhere. <laughs> but he also really likes the Heavy Bolters with the lethal hits. It's just his pet thing. I think he's, he found them more useful overall. And again, if you find that... Then feel free to run them with heavy belters. Again, what works for you what works for you. What works for me might not work for you. It's all different things. But again, it's a long range, cheap shooting platform. So now you've got your defiler that can even buddy up with them. You've got your lonely little predator destructor putting fire out. You've got your defiler putting fire out. Someone comes to try and punch them both. And the defiler goes, worry not, my predator friend. I will deal with this. And then goes and like rips people in half. <laughs> and back in this all at the end is a night despoiler with double gatling cannon. And a ruined spear pod, so 36 shots, strength 6, AP 2, slash 3, if contagion, and um, flat damage 2. If you are a marine, god help you if this thing looks at you. If you are anything, god help you if this looks at you, because that's a lot of weight of dice, and that's going to hurt. Unless you're T12, and even then contagion brings you down, you're going to take damage because of the amount of weight of dice this thing is putting out at you. So... This is a really, really fun list. It's very crazy. Um, it's definitely not your what you'd say your average. It's a very Don Hooson list. But again, four wins, one loss. And to me, this really highlights that no matter what people say about units, about what's good, what's bad, your player skill really matters the most because you can take wacky things. And sometimes wacky things are the best because people don't know how to play against Triple Defile or Gatling Burtman. Um, accompanied by, you know, 12 Death Shroud as well, because uh, I wouldn't know how to play against that. I'll tell you that for sure. And that will get you a lot of ability to, like, you come across a metalist, you know exactly what it does. You're playing this, they have no clue what you do, so God help them. Um, but it's really, really cool to see, and it's a fucking wild list on, uh, I, lo I love it so much, and it's really cool to see Defiler's doing well. Uh, maybe maybe I judge you too harshly, Defiler. <laughs> but the win path was he lost to initial Necrons, I think it was probably Hypercrypt. Um, boo, Necrons, I'm not going to go on a Necron rant and do enough of them. Uh, but then he had a mirror match, uh, battered the mirror match, which is quite funny with the Defilers. Uh, then Gene Steeler Cult, which I just imagine these poor little crabs shooting, killing, picking up people, slamming them into the ground, shooting, killing more, picking up more cultists, throwing them around. <laughs> Death Shroud cutting down hundreds of guys every turn. Um, would be a really fun game, that one. Um, so, uh, again, battered those guys. And again, Burt guy, oh my god, 32, 32 shots, more like... 32 kills confirmed. <laughs> um, and then we have another Death Guard mirror. So again, Don Hooson bullying Death Guard players out of the wazoo. And then last but not least, Eldari. And again, Eldari actually really probably won't like this list. Like Burtman just kind of kills anything. Um, and again, the, the Defilers. The one interesting thing about the Defilers as well and the Predators. Defilers have an invul. The Predators don't. So... Again, you spike the five ups on the on like the bright lances or whatever it needs to be. Like defilers can be a lot harder to kill than you think. Whereas the predator, you know, if they've got ignore cover and they're AP three or four, you're only getting six up or no saves at all there, which is quite scary. Whereas the defiler, and again, it's all the all the good things about our demon engines. You always have a five up invulnerable to fall back on. So, but yeah, super super coolest. I'm super happy to see. Well done, uh, Don and the crabs and Bertie. <laughs>
have done incredibly well. And if anyone is a member and in the Discord, ask Don. He's in there. He's always chatting. He's very proud of this, this accomplishment, and he should be. Um, so if anyone wants to know how he played Bert, uh, feel free to you know message him in our Discord and just have a chat with him. Uh, he's always approachable. But that's all for this week. So thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and a subscribe. We'll do this again probably in two weeks when we get some more results in. Uh, thank you so much to our sponsors on the screen right now. Go and check all of them out. Vanguard Tactics, if you're after how, learning how to play, coaching, or just want to watch some cool bat reps, check them out. If you're going to buy any models in the UK, uh, check out Element Games using our affiliate code in the description below. You get some extra crystals, we get some extra crystals. Everyone wins. And if you really like the channel, and you want to get some uh, gaming aids that are in the style of Discussing Resilient Podcast, check out Salt Eye Games Etsy. Use promo code NURGLE. You get 10% off your order. Let's them know we sent you and give us a bit of kickback. You get stuff like objective markers, um, deep strike markers, contagion range markers, all sorts of cool little things like that. And of course, thank you to our YouTube members. You guys are absolute legends and we're growing quite rapidly at the moment, which is really, really nice to see lots of people enjoying Death Guard, hopefully enjoying the content and yeah, I mean, hopefully we'll continue to grow and hopefully that means more content for you guys to enjoy. So do consider becoming a member if you are enjoying the channel. But failing that, a like is more than enough. So thank you very much for tuning on this one, everyone. I will catch you all on the next episode. Stay right on, everyone. Take care. I'll catch you later. Bye-bye.